In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a single horizontal bar chart here, a bit like the Grafana style chart where we measure the time if something is on stats, online, offline, or loading, or something similar to that. So let's start to look how we can create this single horizontal bar chart similar to Grafana in Chart.js 4. First of all, what we need to do here is to get the boiler template. And you can find the boiler template here on chartjs3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon page here. So what we're going to do here is the following. We want to make sure that this becomes first a horizontal bar chart. So I'm going to scroll down here and say here on the index axis, I'm going to say here, this will be Y. Let's save that. There we are. Next, what I want to do is I want to remove all of these options. So basically want to show if something is pending online, offline, basically a very simple chart. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, let's see, we have basically three data sets here. So we're going to say here, this will be, let's say here online. Let's copy all of this here. I'm going to say here, comma and comma. So this one will be uh, loading. And this one will check the status if it is offline. If it is offline, what I want to do is get the red color. So I'm going to put in this color here, but delete everything else. And I guess we can just make it all solid. We don't even need a border in my opinion. We just make it a single solid color. If it is loading, what I want to do then is get it, give it a yellow or orange color, which is the third color here. I'm going to grab this, put it in here. or we'll basically delete everything else. There we are. Now we can just even maybe, let's delete all of this here. This is just excess data, just to keep it clean and nice and short. Finally here, if it is online, I'll just allow the blue color, which is this one here. Remove everything else. There we are, and make this blue. Put that in there, save that, refresh. All right, so now we have these solid colors here. We see offline, loading, and online. What I want to do is I want to match them all aligned here on a single uh, Y scale. So to do this, I'm going to remove all of these options here. There's no more of this. And we're going to say here, this will be just the status to track what is our status. And we're going to remove all the values for now, except for one. Let's save that, refresh. As you can see here right now, it is separate still, but we want to align it to a single row. To do that, we go on the Y scale, comma, and we're going to say here, uh, stacked. And we say this will be true. By doing this, it will be now stacked. They're now on top of each other, but you don't notice it. Why? because the blue one is first or whatever is first, everything else is layered behind this top blue one. What we could do here is to control this. So what I'm going to say here, um, we're going to say here for the Y or for the X, well, what we have to do here is like this. And then what I will say here for the X, we make an array, let's say uh, zero to one comma, and then we have for the Y value, and the Y value is just basically the status here. We can just say here on line. Uh, sorry, not that. That should be the label status. You can just grab this status here. If I save that and refresh, there we are. So now we have this here. Of course, I don't want to have this here. This should be basically when we are tracking the status of, for example, hosting or something like that, the server, if it's online, yes or no. So for this, we will be needing the... Uh, date adapter we're going to do that one but first of all let's narrow this a bit more so i'm going to say here after the index axis i'm going to see uh, aspect ratio and the value of this will be let's say number five let's save that refresh now we have a nice narrow one so what i want to do is for example if a status would have somewhere else again a blue let me show you so let's say we have another item here put the comma here we can say here at three two six and then this one here of course the lower one here for the offline same logic we can keep on adding here uh let's say here from two till three if i save this refresh you can see here now it starts to uh add up items here except for 
the yellow one here. Let's put in here something. Just to make sure that so we have everything nicely set before we change everything else. All right, so we're going to say here, this will be from six to seven. Save that, refresh, there we are. As you can see here, we have this block that's apparently empty somewhere, I forgot something. So we could even add another one here for the loading, comma, and that will be, uh, let's see, what was that number? One to two, save that, refresh. All right, this works all, but this is just basic solid numbers. You can imagine this should be time. So for this, we're going to now add up the time adapter. To do this, we go to chartjs.org. When you go here, go to the ecosystem, scroll down here, and we're going to search here for the adapters. For the adapters, I'm going to take the date FNS, which is one of the time adapters. You can get any one you want. I prefer date FNS. It's very easy to use. If you, you all you need is one JavaScript file to add, which is the date or the chartjs adapter date FNS bundle minimize JavaScript file. This link here, we can just grab that. I'm going to put it here and make sure it loads after everything else or after the chart.js library. Save this, refresh, nothing happens yet. But now let's put in the dates in here. So if I change this here, what I could do here is the following. I can say here, oh, before I even do that, I need to activate the date. So I'm going to say here on the X scale and in the X scale, I'm going to say here, this will be the a type and the type will be time object. We are allowed to do this now because we have now the time object because we loaded the adapter with the time. So then in here, what I can say here, um, let's say here the unit will be by the hour. Save this, refresh. Right now it converts, but of course it doesn't understand anything here yet. This here doesn't make any sense yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up here a uh, value or basically two values. First of all, I want to have a minimum and let's say the minimum, minimum will be this year. Well, let's say here, 2023-0101, save that refresh. All right. So now we get that the numbers are still not matching because it doesn't understand exactly when it starts. So it's probably assumes the very starting point in the computer thing is 1970, something like that. Anyway, what I want to do here. Convert this 2023 0101, and then we can put in here the specific time. Let's say we'll start at 12 midnight, and then I want to grab this, put it in here, and this one will be 30 minutes from there. And of course, we can grab this and put it in here. And this one will be just let's say here, this will be 3 a.m. till oh, sorry, it should be here 3 till. It's here, of course, not there. That's the minutes till 6 a.m. If I save this, refresh, we're now getting somewhere. Of course, the tooltip is still not aligned. We're going to work on that. So let's put in some dummy data or fictional data in here. So I'm just going to put in some basics. This will be 2 a.m. in the morning till 3 a.m. Then I will say here, we have another one that will be, uh, let's see here, from 1 till 2. So this will be one till two and this one will be from six to seven so this will be six to seven a.m save that refresh there we are of course you can just fill up you have to fill up the blanks here based on your data that's the whole purpose of it so what i want to do next is of course make sure that the tool tip is aligned so i'm going to scroll down here and we're going in the scales, well not in the scales, after the scales, put a comma, we're going to say plugins, we're going to say plugins here, and then I will say here the tool tip, because I want to pinpoint the tool tip here. What I want to do in the tool tip here is, first of all, remove this square box here. This has no value now. I guess it's quite uh, self-explanatory based on the colors here. We have it here, so it doesn't need to be in there. So we're going to say here, color, uh, what is this? The display color, if I'm not mistaken, display colors, which is basically the specific square. Now we have the removed, we have here the loading. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this here is being recognized as the proper time and not whatever it is now in milliseconds. So in here, I'm going to say callbacks with an S, it's plural. 
within the callbacks I'm going to select here the label because I want to pinpoint the label this is the label is this part of the tooltip there's a lot of different parts of the tooltip I have a special video for that uh, it's about understanding all the tooltip functionalities in Chart.js check out that video by the way if you want to know more but what I want to do here is the following in the label ctx then here callback functionality and then what I want to do here is just say console log ctx all right open up the developer tab and then as I hover over here it will just give us some additional data and what I want here is very specific let's look at this data we have here the formatted data that is fine but I will not go for the formatted I probably will get the raw data here or let's see here I guess that's the, this is the raw data we can grab or we get here the parse data with the milliseconds or it's somewhere in here if I'm not mistaken uh, let me double check where is that I guess here the parsed and then you have here the custom this is the one this is probably the most applicable item for me because this one here is zero and um, this one here only indicates one of the items which is probably the ending but not the starting so what I need to have is a starting value and the ending value in milliseconds so we have this underscore custom so what I'm going to say here is dot and I'm going to say a parsed then dot underscore custom dot bar start let's save that refresh if you hover over you can see here we will get now the starting value which should be the very first value of the two tip here this one here as you can see so what i want to do now is i want to grab this so i'm going to say yeah, very simple constant uh let's say start date will be equal to new date we make this a date object so once we have this, I want the same logic for the ending date. So I'm going to say here, end date. And then we say here, bar end. So we get the milliseconds of that one. So now what I want to do is I want to format this into my specific item, which is basically, you could say here the day, the year, the month, whatever. So we're going to do that one here. So we're going to say a constant formatted start date. And the format start date will be equal to get the start date object. And then what I want to do here is a dot to local string. So now we have this and this here allows us to control this object into a way how I want to present it uh, in here. So what I'm going to say here for the year, you could choose here anything and I'm going to say here numeric. So this will be a numeric value. Then I'm going to say for the month, for the month, you could have here basically uh, a number, so numeric. You could say short, let's say short if you want to have like uh, a shortcut of the month, like December, like three letters, long, for full, well, anything you want here. So what I want to do next here, I will say here the day as well. So I want the month day, uh, here should be a number as well, numeric, we don't need anything else. Make sure you spell this correctly. Then what I want to do here is the hour. And the hour in this case, it will be a two digit. And then because I will use the American standard AM PM, I'm going to say here, uh, two hour, hour digit. Uh, and then we can say here, hour 12, say true. All right. And then what I want to do here. So this is for the AM PM. Well, let me just save this. And what I want to do here is just say return the formatted start date to give you a visual save refresh uh all right location is not uh to locate that is not of course it should be not locate but local as in local uh, location all right so now we're getting here we can see here we get a few things am but what i want to have here not only that i want to have the minutes and the minutes will be two digits and we can say here if seconds is important we can say here seconds two digits as well save this refresh there we are uh did it not really let's save that let's see if this is maybe a issue here ah of course i think it's not minute it's singular or not minutes and seconds it's singular not plural there we are we get the seconds minutes all being shown here and the am value if you don't want the am remove this one here then you get the 24 hour military time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. 
I want to show this as well for the formatted end date. And this will be the end date save that refresh. So of course, right now we don't have anything yet. But if I would say here, what I'm going to say here, backtick, backtick, we're going to use a template, literal, dollar sign. This is a string for a variable. So we say here, then we don't have to do here concatenation in a complicated way. We can just type it like that and I can grab here the other value, put the other value in here. I'll say the formatted end date. Save that, refresh. All right, so we're getting this here, but in my opinion, if we're tracking our seconds, minutes, we don't have to have this redundancy here of the same day. I'm going to assume, I'm not sure if that's really allowed, but I'm going to take the assumption that this is probably a redundant data. So I'm going to save this or remove those, then save it. And then you can see here, we get here this structure. We could play around more. If you would say, well, I would like to have it, um, uh, uh, what is that, as an array. So it will be, the values will be swapped down. You can play around with that more. I will not go too deep in it, but I'll just show you a basic example here. We, then in that case, you could do it like this. We can probably remove this. Let's say a comma, and this here is just a string value. Then here again, a comma. We have this here as well. This is a real value, save this refresh. And then you can see here, it will go down. Probably there are some features on it, text alignment, uh, position center, etc., etc., for the tool tip. However, I will not go into that now. But that is basically the way how you can play around and create this style of chart.